Okay, joining us from Stanford is head coach Tara Vanderveer and student athletes Kiana Williams and Dijanae Carrington and SID John Canalupi on the side over here. Coach, if you would begin with an opening statement, please. Well, hello everyone. Uh, we're very excited about our season and um, very happy to have Kiana and Dijanae here. They're going to be leaders of our young team. Um, we have um, a very talented group returning and we have some uh, exceptional freshmen this year, and I'm, I'm really excited about how our team has been working hard in the preseason, and just I uh, love our uh, team motto of more than me, um, and it's gonna, that's what it's going to take. We're going to have to really improve a lot and uh, stay healthy, and we're going to have a great year. Oh, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Hi. <laughs> um, can... For the players and for Tar, can you talk about how the freshmen are sort of integrating into what you guys do, and has it been pretty seamless so far, bringing on the bringing in the young people? Well, okay, I guess I'll start and then okay. turn it over to you guys. You know, one of the things um, it, we've really started early. It seems like the calendar is like this is early, and everything has been early. And for some of our players, um, They've been out. Like Dijanae is just coming back. Nadia has been out. Uh, we've had we have several players out. So the freshmen have gotten a lot of reps, um, and I think our upperclassmen have have really helped them a lot to learn things. They take them aside. They show them things. They're helping them. Um, but some of it is uh, the the freshmen are the ones that are out there a lot, and I think they're doing very well. Um, I'd agree with what Tara just said. Um, like you said, she said they're getting a lot of reps and they catch on to things really fast. Um, I feel like you show them something once and they, they get it automatically, so which is good. I'm supposed to set this up here. Um, I don't think we are hearing it. I mean, just we we kind of we're we're a little bit isolated. We're in that gym and we're working hard. And um, I mean, that's their expectation. I think to, you know. So the pressure is from within. It, there's never any pressure from outside at all. Uh, the pressure is from within to be the best that we can be. And we know we have a lot of talent, but we also know we have a lot of work to do. And we want to really improve a lot. Um, and one of the things that I guess I, I was talking to someone about this already today, but, you know, we were going down the stretch, ranked number one, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, you're supposed to do this and get this seed. And then you have a couple injuries, boom, you're out. So, I mean, just even, look, you know, look at the Warrior situation. Um, we're going to take every day and enjoy every single day. And I want to make uh, every day, I'm, I'm really excited to be here with Dijanae. I know she won't be sitting in that chair next year. You know, and I want to have a great year coaching her and enjoy every day. And not, uh, not, not even buy into that um, kind of, uh, you know, just all the, all the pressure stuff. We're going to have fun. Coach, uh, a lot of uh, the coaches have come up here and talked about how they see this as the Pac-12 having been the deepest since they've been here. Since you've been around the conference for such a long time and, you know, four potential top ten teams in the Pac-12 this year. How, how does the depth of this league compare in, in your eyes? Well, you know, I think the Pac-12 and Pac-10 has always been a great conference. And the game changer, in my mind, has been Pac-12 networks in that now, you know, then people could watch the West Coast basketball. A lot of times we were playing and no one was watching. And the example I would give you is that a, a great player like Tina Thompson was not All-American at USC. 
Uh, so why didn't that happen? Because people didn't know about her. Now people know about our teams, and we're getting better players. And I would agree with you that top to bottom, uh, it is uh, stronger. You know, may, there might have been days where we could say, you know, you could pencil in a W against a certain team. You can't do that anymore. But, um, you know, these young ladies, are they're, uh, they're playing against, the, I think, the best in the country, and that's very exciting. I didn't let Dijana answer your question, Ann. Did you want her to comment on that? <laughs> well, like Tara said, I I personally don't feel any pressure. I don't think our team our team does it either. Kiana, you feel any pressure? Not at all. Yeah, we just I mean we take it day by day. Obviously, we have goals throughout the season, but we know that none of those are going to happen without us just focusing on the day at hand. And so that's kind of what we've been doing um, each day in practice, just trying to do the best that we can and. If we do that, then we'll reach all of those expectations that the outside has for us. See, that's a better answer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Cheryl Coward, Hoop Feed. Um, November 15th, you play uh, San Francisco at the new Chase Center. And I talked to Molly last week, and she's really excited about that game, you know, because you'll be among the first college teams to play in that facility. Um, what do you think of that? And and for the players, are you excited about it, coach and players? I'm very excited. I can't wait to see that uh, building. And, uh, you know, it's just a great arena. And it'll be really fun, you know, playing against USF. We're very excited about it. How do you guys feel? Yeah, I'm excited as well. <clears throat> very excited. I mean, years ago, there would, never have, there would never have been even an inkling that a women's college basketball team would play in an NBA arena, and now it's it's possible. So we see we are able to see how far we've come, and even though there's still far to go, I think it's so exciting and an honor to play there. Uh, ben Parker from GoldenBearReport.com, Coach. I just want to get your thoughts on uh, having you know Coach Sharman Smith. Now I see her as a head, as a player. Now she's a head coach at Cal. Just your thoughts on her and what she'll bring to the program, and any advice that maybe you you've given her as she's stepping into this new role. Well, um, we know Sharman does a great imitation of me. Did she do that? <laughs> okay. Um, well, Sharman, you know, is an outstanding young lady, um, majored in engineering at Stanford, um, and just um, loves basketball, uh, very intelligent, hardworking, and I, I know she'll do a great job. Um, you know, when I think about being the head coach for the first time at Cal, to me that that's very intimidating. Um, I, I mean, I was a head coach at Idaho, and – you know, but she's right in that spotlight, um, and I hope that she knows that, you know, my, I'll always, you know, be a mentor for her, and uh, as long as they come in second, I'm, I'm cheering for them. Um, but she'll do a great job, and I'm really excited for her. Shereen Ryan in the front row com over here, Coach. Okay, sorry. That's okay. My my question is, <laughs> you're right, but it was full when I got here. No, it's not. <laughs> anyway, um, my co uh, my question uh, goes along the same lines. Uh, you have Charmin as a head coach at Cal. You've got the Aguma K sisters playing, and ones in the media. You've got um, Roz. You know, you've got a lot of stars. Is Isn't didn't I see her? I saw her upstairs. I think. I actually, my kids were were in your camps. Like you have really um, mentored and meant a lot to a lot of young women. Now, how does that is is that fulfilling at this point in your career? Uh, you know, I'm really proud of all the people that you mentioned, and you know, and obviously the two up here too. Um, it, it's just kind of every once in a while I'll be like when I was at basketball camp and Vanessa Nygaard's daughter was at camp and Kate's daughter's at camp. I'm thinking, wow, I, I've been around a while. Um, it's, but it's uh, it's humbling, and um, again, I'm just I'm so proud of Roz or Chanae or Neka, Jane Appel, um, you know, all of, all of the great players that I've had a chance to coach, and I just feel really fortunate and very uh, very blessed to be in the situation I'm in. Tara, Fran is going to bring something um, to the women's game, to the collegiate women's game, and to your program, obviously, with the dunking that she's obviously known for nationally. How are you going to integrate that, prepare for it, game plan for it? What do you do with that very special talent that she has that everybody knows about? 
I think it's just going to happen organically. Maybe we'll have to run uh, like a lob play, you know, um, talk, talk to Steve Kerr about some good lob plays that he runs. But, um, you know, I just, I just want her to, um, you know, not put pressure on herself. Um, maybe just do it and warm up and get it over with, you know. But, she, I mean, obviously we know she can dunk and, um, you know, but not, I don't want her getting hurt doing it either. Here, Coach um, Julie Jag from the Salt Lake Tribune, formerly Santa Cruz Sentinel. So I've been covering Haley Jones, and as long as we're talking about the freshmen a little bit, uh, she's kind of been one of those players that's been a positionless player, and that's kind of been her um, part of her identity. How, do you see the league and the uh, well, the league? Do you see the, uh, women's basketball kind of moving more toward positionless players, and how do you plan to use her? Well, Haley is uh, an exceptional young lady, uh, and when you say positionless basketball, she's six one, six two. Um, you know, plays the guard, plays plays every. You know, she plays one, two, three, four on her team. Five. Um, what What's really um, astounding to me, honestly, is how quickly she catches on to everything. I, at first, I thought, well, I don't want to overload her with stuff, but you know, where should I play her? Uh, should I play her where we need her most, or should I play her where she's best? Uh, well, she's really good at everything, so. Uh, I just put her out there and uh, let her learn kind of on the fly. Um, but she's, um, she's very intelligent. Um, you know, she's uh, someone that will add a lot to our team. Uh, just a great passer, great vision, and really fun to work with. Really uh, finds key wherever you are key. <laughs> Any more questions for Stanford? Tar, without jumping ahead, you are in a position potentially late in the season to pass Pat Summit for the all-time wins for women's basketball. Do you have any, are you, you probably haven't thought about it, but do you have any thoughts about it if somebody asks you about it? Um, it has come up here. It has come up here. It's not something that I've really thought about, but, um, you know, I, it just comes back to kind of what I said before, just enjoy every day because here's someone that was uh, – arguably the greatest coach in the history of women's basketball. And she's not here to enjoy, you know, all the things that she helped build. And the relationships with your players are, are number one. Um, it, it's not about winning. It's more about uh, just having, uh, you know, be, I want to do a good, good job for Key. And I want to do a good job, uh, you know, a great job for uh, Dee. It's her last year. Um, and I think that... Um, you know, it's, a, it's very humbling to be in the conversation with uh, Pat. I, I was uh, friends with Pat when she was coaching and um, just uh, someone very special. But uh, it's, it's, it's sad to think about. Um, you know, if that happens, and, uh, you know, I hope, it, I hope it does just because that will mean we're, we're being very successful. But it's not something that, like, I'm, I'm counting down or anything. I'm just like, let's have, a great, let's have a great practice today. Let's get better today. And then if it happens, great. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all very much. We'll see you during the season.